Now we move on to an advanced use of dynamic content in this part of the personalization series. What I want to do is look at how you use dynamic content to influence your CSS so that you have the flexibility to style just about anything on your site using your viewers' preferences. This seriously is a game changer, so let's explore. Just to start with the basics, what is CSS? Now, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it basically is the code behind what your site looks like. Think of CSS as the flesh on your HTML bones. It's where we control the style and look of your site through applying lines of code. Now, every website has this, in fact, when you create the style of a page using, say, the page builder or your brand settings, you are actually changing your CSS. This means that with a little know-how, you can have the flexibility to do some pretty wild things on your site. To access your CSS, you can either head to your campaign settings, then design custom styles, or just open the CSS within the page builder with the paintbrush icon found on the top left. Now, this may feel daunting if you have never coded before, and that's okay. Just take a look and it will help grow your confidence over time. In CSS, you can isolate particular elements on your site's page using classes. These allow you to provide a name that references that element. For example, if you were to target the donation form, uh, you can inspect that element and see that it has a class called donation-form. If then you wanted to style the form, you can use this class to do so. So how does this relate to using dynamic content? Well, like how you can use merge fields in block settings, such as the, U the image URL, you can also use them in the class attribute setting in the advanced tab on the block. Say I want to change the hero image on the profile page. I could simply add a class to that row and then use the class to target and style that row. But that would change it for everyone. But what if I want to change the row's image depending on the user's preference? Well, say for example, the fundraiser is choosing from three different activities. Cycling, walking, and the gym in their sign-up form. So you've added a custom field to capture that preference in the sign-up form. Well, what you can now do is add a merge field to the row's class attribute that sets the class with their preference. If the field ID is activity select, you could just add in Profile, private activity select to the rows class attribute. Now, when the fundraiser signs up and selects one of the three activity types on offer, that class attribute will pull, or for that row, will now pull on that value. What this means then is that you can now add CSS code to target that row for that specific activity type. For example, if they selected cycling, then now that row has a class cycling, which you can then target and style. This gets pretty cool. Now let's work through three examples of this in use. Let's start with the example I just used. Say you are running a P2P event and with three activity options and you wanted to style the fundraiser's profile or dashboard page based on their preference. Well, first, uh, you'd add a custom field so you can capture that preference in the sign-up form. I've placed it in the profile data, as you can see. Now here, note the field ID, as we'll need that in the next step. Next, let's head over to Pages and open up the Profile page. This page is created for fundraisers when they sign up so they can encourage others to donate. Let's open up the first row settings and then select the Advanced tab. 
open up attributes, and here we can place the merge field for our custom field we created. Now I've created one with the field ID activity select. Now I'm going to open up the CSS and here enter some simple code to style the background. Just note what we're doing here. First, I'm targeting the class for the first row, which is row hyphen hyphen one. Following this, I've created three other sections which target the activity select value the users will select from and also added the row underscore underscore BG child class, which you need to change the image. This is a good example for when working with campaigns when the user signs up and their data is captured in the CRM. The next example is where the fundraiser chooses a personalized guide that will then theme their experience. This example relates to any time you want the user to pre-select an option before sign up. That then changes their visual experience of the campaign. Now, as you can see, I've created three guides for this campaign. James, Kylie, and Josh. I just thought I'd pick on some team members. Now, when the user selects their option, it will theme their sign-up experience and any other campaign experience you wish, such as their profile page or dashboard. Here's how I've done it. Firstly, create a new custom field that will store this data. Again, I've chosen to place this data in the profile data source, but it could be in the user field also. And I'm calling it guide select. Field type is select, and I want three values, James, Kylie, and Josh. In the default value, I'll ask for the data from a query string. So I use, now let's add that field to the signup form but I'm going to hide that field since they already have pre-selected it before. After saving changes, I'm going to add the guide select section to my homepage. As you can see, I have three image options, each linking to this signup page. Now in the image settings, I'm going to add a query string to the signup pages link. For James, I'll add, and I'll do the same for Kylie and Josh just changing the strings values for each. I can now save my changes. So when a user selects Kylie, the user is sent to the signup page. And in the query string, the guide select data has Kylie in its value. The hidden field we have created in the signup form will now look to the query string for that value and thereby entering Kylie. Now, this is a great way to get data into your fundraiser's profile whilst making their sign-up experience seamless. All right, now for the fun part. Let's also add the query string from the image to style their sign-up experience. I'm going to add in the query merge field in the attributes for the image block and also the sign-up form. I can now add some CSS to style the experience. Firstly, targeting the image block so that the guide's image changes based on their preference. Now I'll theme up the signup form with unique colors for each guide too. Let's take a look at the end result. Now these are just rough examples. With some real polish, you can achieve some incredible results. The last example is looking at changing donation form amounts based on the donor type. Say, for example, you are running an appeal campaign and you are about to send out emails to all your supporters. You know that in your database is a mixture of donor types such as major donors or corporates or new donors. How then could you change what donation amounts appear based on the type of supporter? Well, let me show you. Now let's go into your donation form settings. Here we want to create different donation amounts for each donor type. Now when creating the amount, enter the donor type value in the custom CSS class. This is important. Now open up your page where the donation form lives and open up the donation form block settings. 
in the class attribute field under the advanced tab into a query merge field such as. Now, whatever value is brought over from the query string donor type, you can now use in CSS. You can then open your CSS and enter. Now, what this code does is target the donation form and the query string value. In this case, major. Then targets each of the button classes you've made and tells them either not to display, display none, or to display, display block. You will need to add these lines for of, of CSS for each donor type you have. Each time changing the first line to suit the query string value needed. For a quick tip, you can also hide frequency options. This may be helpful if you just want to offer a particular donor type of one-off giving, but the others the rest. This line of code will hide all frequency options except the first, which is the default one-off. I would suggest for good practice to create a donation custom field for donor type and place it in as a hidden field in your donation form. Just place the query string merge field in the default value to make sure that data is captured when donors donate. Now we've covered a lot and you should now have plenty of ideas to go away and test. Be sure to set up some test campaigns to try this out on and don't fear to give it a go and push the limits. The more practice, the easier it becomes. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit like now. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then what are you waiting for? You'll be notified when new content becomes available and also receive our regular updates on what's happening at Raisley. Be sure to leave any questions or comments below and check out the description for more resources on all things CSS code that I've used in this guide. Now go and enjoy creating in Raisley.